Hey, SEC community. Did you know that this year in 2020, our YouTube channel has had nearly 7,000 views and an overwhelmingly large part of that was due to the increase in those taking advantage of our online worship services. And as we move into 2021, we want to continue making the availability of our online services a huge priority and to do so with excellence. Now, as you can imagine, this takes a lot of resources and a lot of specialized equipment to be able to do so. And so we want to ask that if you have been blessed in any way by our online services this year, uh, if you've been able to connect with God, connect with His Word, connect with His church through these services, then please consider a year-end donation to go toward further developing our online service and our production quality. Your gift will go to help purchase all of the necessary audio and video equipment, the software, everything needed for our leadership and volunteers to continue making our services available online every week to a growing audience. If you'd like to give toward this endeavor, you can make checks payable to Sardinia Church of Christ and just put the words SCC Tech in the memo line. Or you can also give online or on our mobile app simply choose the SCC Tech Fund option. Thank you for making it possible for God's message of hope to continue to reach our community and our world for Christ during this challenging season. God bless. Welcome and thank you for checking out our service. Make sure to visit our website, sardiniacc.com, or download our church app to stay up to date and connected with everything going on here at SCC. And no matter where you're tuning in from today, we hope that this message encourages you and challenges you to follow Jesus and make disciples. God bless, and we hope to see you soon at one of our live in-person worship gatherings on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Hey, so as we move into a time of communion, I wanted to just do a quick activity here. This is our family Sunday. We've got our kids and students in here. Uh, and so just wanted to run through a quick exercise. Um, now, we all just had our Thanksgiving this year. And, and so I wanted to see um, what kinds of foods bring us together at the Thanksgiving table and what kinds of foods maybe drive a wedge between our family. And so in just a moment, we're going to toss some images up here of some different um, uh, famous Thanksgiving dishes. And if you do not like it, I want you to respond by saying, yuck, okay? If you do like it, I want you to respond by saying, yeah, baby, okay? And if you're just indifferent, if you could take it or leave it, maybe you can just go, eh. All right, so one of those three options, yuck, yeah, baby, eh. All right, if you're watching at home, please play along with us as well. Let's go ahead and, and see this first one here, our first. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got, we got the, the dressing, the dressing, yeah, all right. So we, I heard some yeah, babies, all right. <laughs> I heard a no thank you, that's very polite. All right, what's our next one here? We got, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, the cranberry sauce. All right, I'm going to try to remain as politically neutral as possible throughout this. All right, so what's our, our next item? The green bean casserole. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we're it's getting a little tense in here. All right, let's see our next item. Oh, the sweet potato casserole, or as I like to call it, marshmallows. Um, yep, yeah, okay, so I heard some yeah babies, heard some yucks. All right, what's our, oh, the dessert, pumpkin pie. All right, lots of yeah, babies, pumpkin pie. It's a staple. It's been around for a while. How about this uh, last one here? Oh, yeah, Chick-fil-A. And, and all God's people said, yeah, baby. That's right, the Lord's chicken. Uh, I think I even saw some turkeys this year with signs that said eat more chicken. Um, so always, always a good one. Hey, you know, even though we have things that can tend to drive us apart or divide us when we come around the Thanksgiving table with our families. When we come around the communion table, it is meant to be a time to be united as the family of God. And what brings us together is the fact that we have a Savior who gave up his life on a cross. Uh, he took the punishment that we deserve so that we wouldn't have to endure that ourselves and so that we would have the hope of eternity with him. And that should bring us all together. That should excite us all. Amen? Amen. 
Hey, so in just a moment, I'm going to pray for our communion time, and then we just ask that you take a moment to uh, pause and reflect where you are, and then when you are ready, we've got communion stations set up uh, around the room here. Uh, you can go and, and take communion there. If you're watching at home, uh, we encourage you just to uh, pause where you are and take communion with your family as well. Let's pray. Jesus, we are so thankful um, that your death your burial, your resurrection to a new life is what brings us together, is what unites us as followers of you. And uh, today we are just so thankful, we are so grateful that you did what none of us could do, uh, that you endured the cross for us, you paid the punishment for our sins that we deserved. Uh, and because of that, we have a hope of eternal life with you and with our family here forever. And so we are just grateful for that today, Jesus. We pray all that uh, in your name. Amen. Well, hey, we're going to move into a time of worshiping God through our giving. Uh, and every week we take an opportunity to give back and, and really to say thank you to God for all that he has blessed us with. Uh, and so we're still doing kind of social distance giving. We encourage you to do that online through our mobile app where we have some stations set up as you leave today. Also want to encourage you this week to consider giving a special gift right here at the end of the year. Um, our YouTube channel uh, at the church this year has had nearly seven thousand views and the vast majority of that have been through people taking advantage of our online services. Uh, every single week we put out our service online so that those who are uh, at risk with their health, they're vulnerable uh, to the virus, those who have to be in quarantine. Anybody had to be in quarantine here yet already? Yeah, the quarantiners, uh, the people who are sick or think they're going to get sick or even have sick thoughts. Uh, just kidding, not, not that. But we want to make sure that we are as safe as possible when we are gathered here. And so that's why we provide these online services. And so as you can imagine, that takes a lot of specialized equipment. It takes a lot of uh, different resources that we need to make those available and continue to do those with excellence. Uh, so we want to invite you, uh, if you would like to make a donation to help um, to help fund some of those resources we need to continue making our online uh, services available to do so. You can simply, if you write a check, you can put SCC Tech uh, in the memo line there. You can also, there's an option online where you can give toward that as well. But that uh, helps us to continue to make our services available uh, to people who either cannot come. It's also helped us connect with people who otherwise never would have set, uh, set foot here uh, come through our doors at Sardinia Church of Christ. And so that has just been a huge blessing. I know that many of you were blessed to be able to uh, connect with us when everything was shut ba uh, down back in the spring. Uh, this is going to continue to help make that available so that we can continue to bless others uh, through worship and through uh, being together in God's Word. So let me pray for our offering right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, that we live in a day and age where technology makes it possible uh, to reach those who cannot be here in person, uh, to reach those who maybe uh, otherwise would never set, walk through doors of a church. But now they're able to be uh, connected to your people. They're able to be connected uh, to your word. And you're able to work uh, through your word and work through those online services to reach others. God, and so we, we praise you for that. Uh, God, I pray that we would be generous with the resources that you have blessed us with and that we would use them for a purpose and that purpose is to make your name known and to connect others with Jesus and with his church. We pray all this in his name. Amen.
Well, hey, good morning. Welcome, welcome. We are excited that you are here today. It is an exciting day. Uh, we are thankful for today. We hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving with your family this year, even though probably looked a little bit different than in years past. Uh, but we are glad that you <clears throat> are here today. We want to welcome those of you that are visiting family today. Maybe you're here for the first time or for the first time in a while. Uh, welcome to all of you watching online. Welcome to our kids and students. Uh, we are having a kind of a family worship today. <clears throat> we're trying something new where every time we have a fifth Sunday in a month, we're going to try one big family worship time together. Uh, and so we are glad that you are here. If you are new, my name is Brett Parker. Uh, I am the senior minister here at Sardinia Church of Christ. Uh, I've been married to my wife, Brittany, for almost 13 years now. Uh, we are actually expecting our fifth child any day now, uh, and so we are super, super excited about that. Uh, people keep asking me, um, hey, what's it like, you know, about to have a fifth child, and uh, that Jim Gaffigan line always comes to mind. Imagine you're drowning, and then someone hands you a baby. It's kind of how Kind of how we feel right now, but we are, we're very excited though. Um, <clears throat> we're excited to have five kids. Fifth one's going to be a breeze, I think. Um, we've had a chance to make all the mistakes on the other four. Uh, so we've got this, we've got this. Uh, now, even though I'm still fairly new to uh, parenting, I've had plenty of chances to make lots of mistakes over the last eight or nine years or so. Uh, I'm actually fairly new to being um, a senior pastor as well. I've been in ministry for a long time, but I've only been at Sardinia Church of Christ for about 18 months or so, so this is my first time leading a church, uh, certainly first time leading through a global pandemic. Um, <clears throat> so really, I'm just in this season of life where uh, mistakes are made often, and all I can do is try to learn from them, you know what I mean? Uh, I came across an article, though, uh, that demonstrated some critical mistakes that other churches have made, not, not this one, but other churches have made when it came to publishing announcements in their bulletins. Anybody out there ever read their church bulletin? All right, we, we have them available. They're also available online to keep you up to date with everything that's going on here. Uh, if you look on our mobile app, uh, but at these churches, if you had happened to read some of these announcements, you would have discovered some pretty big uh-oh moments. Didn't mean to say that, right? So here are just a few examples I want to want to give to you this morning. The first one, uh, this announcement was published. Uh, for those of you who have children and don't know it, we have a nursery downstairs. So, yeah. You ever, oh man, I didn't know I had those kids, right? <clears throat> uh, next one here. Uh, don't let worry kill you. Let your church help. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, all right, next one here. Uh, join us for a special luncheon after services, prayer and medication to follow. <laughs> Didn't know we did that, did you? Uh, <clears throat> oh, this next one is very, very appropriate here. Uh, please remember in prayer the many who are sick of our congregation. <laughs> so, <laughs> got a lot of those, apparently. Um, Oh, this is a good one. Uh, we are pleased to announce the birth of David Weiss, the sin of Pastor and Mrs. Abe Weiss. Ooh, man. So, yeah, some, some of those announcements can get you in trouble there. Uh, next one here. A bean supper will be held Wednesday evening in the fellowship hall. Music will follow. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <clears throat> next one. Uh, the pastor is on vacation. Massages can be given to his secretary. So don't try that one. All right. Uh, and last one here. Hey, if you enjoy sinning, the choir is looking for you. It's amazing what one little letter can change, right? Uh, now, I don't know about you, but I am very thankful that I have not made any mistakes quite like that one yet. Uh, but I know it's the Christmas season, uh, but we're still kind of in the middle of this uh, season of thankfulness right now. And so I, that's what I'd kind of like to talk to you about just for the next few moments. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in the first chapter uh, of, uh, sorry, the fifth chapter of his first letter to the church in Thessalonica, this is what he says, Rejoice always, pray continually, 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I'd like to focus on that last part of, of verse, uh, verse 18 there, uh, because the first thing that we note is that the Apostle Paul uh, commands us to give thanks. We are commanded to give thanks. This, uh, this is not something new. Uh, the, the command to give thanks had been around for centuries before. The Apostle Paul didn't just make this up. The idea of giving thanks to the Lord had been around uh, since the beginning of Israel, since God's people were first uh, conceived, coming out of the Exodus. Thanksgiving is woven all throughout the Old Testament. We're told over 20 times in the Psalms alone to give thanks to God. But the question is, uh, why would God ask us to give thanks to him? I mean, does God need us to do that? Is God so uh, conceited or, or stuck up that he needs us to, to thank him for the things that he gives us? Uh, does God need us to uh, puff up his, his self-esteem with, with all sorts of praise? Well, of, of, course, of course we know that's not the case. God doesn't need those kinds of things. We serve a good God, a benevolent Father who, who loves to give gifts to His children. And so what we find is that even when God asks us to give thanks, He's doing it for us. It's because He loves us. He wants what's best for us. God, God asks us to give thanks because it's actually beneficial for us to do so. It's beneficial in a couple of ways. First, it reminds us that he is God, and we're not. God is God, I'm not. Giving thanks helps us to be mindful of that. It helps us to be mindful of where everything comes from. Psalm 24 says that the earth is the Lord and everything in it. Everything belongs to him. Nothing is really ours. Uh, Job, the book of Job, Job declares, Hey, naked I came into this world, naked I'm going to go. Sorry I said naked so many times on Family Sunday in church. Uh, but hey, giving thanks is God's way of helping us. It's helping us to not become prideful or arrogant. It's its way of helping us uh, conform to the image of Christ. Giving thanks helps us experience God's grace and his mercy in our lives. But, you know, God doesn't only know what's best for us spiritually, uh, he also knows what's best for us physically and mentally and emotionally, um, which is why he designed our bodies to respond a certain way when we are thankful, when we express gratitude. Did you know that thankfulness and gratitude are scientifically proven to be life hacks? Uh, recent research discovered that there are amazing health benefits to being thankful. In a 2003 study, uh, it was done, uh, participants were asked to write down something that they were thankful for every single day uh, for uh, an entire month. And at the end of the study, they found that those who did this exercised more, had more energy, uh, and they slept an average of 30 minutes longer more every single day. That's, that's pretty awesome, right? Parents out there, you know what an extra 30 minutes of sleep can do for you. Right? A similar study in 2012 revealed that thankful people, uh, they reported feeling healthier than others who did not express gratitude. Uh, they experienced fewer aches and pains uh, as opposed to those who, did not, uh, who were not thankful. Other studies have found that, that thankful people have a higher degree of patience and they're also perceived better by others. You see, there truly is a blessing associated with obeying God's command to be thankful, to give thanks. And I like that. I like that first part of the verse. I, 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 you know, knowing all the benefits, who wouldn't want to be thankful? I mean, come on, it's, it's good for you. Sounds pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. But then we come to the second part. And he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Well, hey, I, 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 don't, I don't really know about that. Slow, slow down there a little bit, God. Um, it's one thing to be thankful for a roof over my head and food on the table, but, but there are just some things I don't think I can be thankful for. 
I don't think I can be thankful for a family member or, or maybe a close friend that's suffering with, uh, with some kind of illness. I can't be thankful when uh, I have to file for, for bankruptcy. I can't be thankful for pink slips or divorce papers or foreclosures or addictions. I certainly can't be thankful for COVID. And, you know, it, it's true. Uh, it's difficult to be thankful for those kinds of things. But I love what Dr. Tony Evans points out about this verse. He says, you know, we're, we're not commanded to be thankful for everything. We're not commanded to be thankful for every circumstance that we experience, but we are told to be thankful in every circumstance. And there's, there's a huge difference between for and in. You see, the right preposition makes all the difference. Listen to some of these examples. Uh, if somebody were to say, hey, can somebody uh, take a bone to the dog? Right? That's a whole, a whole lot different than saying, hey, can somebody go take a bone from the dog? All right, you, you get the difference there? Uh, you could say, hey, the stockings were hung by the chimney. But it takes on a whole different meaning if you say the stockings were hung in the chimney. That's a big fire hazard. I wouldn't recommend that one. You could say something like, hey, um, hey, come with me, bro. Come with me. It's very inviting, very uh, friendly. But if you change it to come at me, bro, all right, that's, that's a whole different ball game there, all right? It's a whole different kind of invitation. Now, God doesn't want to see his children suffering. God, his desire is, is to bless us. But God also desires for us to grow, for us to become mature in faith. And so in his infinite wisdom, God uses our circumstances to mold us and to strengthen us, to, to conform us to the image of Jesus. Uh, James reminds us in, in his letter that our trials and our tests of faith, they produce perseverance. Uh, Paul declares to us in Romans 8, 28, that God is at work in all things for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. So just as we are called to be thankful in our circumstances, we can trust that God is also working in our circumstances. We don't have to be thankful for our circumstances. We certainly don't have to like them. As we're entering a holiday season, uh, you know, some of you might be in this uh, kind of a phase of life where grief is at the forefront. All right, there's, there's an empty table at the chair this year, and it only reminds you of pain and sorrow, the sorrow that you feel right now. Uh, many of us are feeling the effects of isolation and illness and loneliness that this pandemic has brought about, and, and we aren't thankful for those kinds of things. The scripture says that we can be thankful in this season because we have confidence that God is right there with us. He's, uh, he's, he's there to be our comforter. He brings peace in the middle of our storm. We can be thankful that he is our hope and that he is at work in your life right now. You know, much like us, the first pilgrims that settled here in, in America, they found themselves in pretty dark circumstances where many people around them were experiencing sickness and death and grief. And even in such a dark season, they still found a way to be thankful. Listen to this quote by, quote by H.W. Westmeyer. He says, The pilgrims made seven times more graves than they did huts. And nevertheless, they still set aside a day of thanksgiving. Even in their circumstances, they could still give thanks. Now lastly, the Apostle Paul alludes to the idea that thankfulness is God's will for us in Christ. He says it. He says, give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's not just an idea it's not just an item on God's wish, wish list. It's not just a nice suggestion. It is God's will for us. And so for those of us who choose to give thanks, we are placing ourselves right smack in the center of God's will for our lives in Christ. This means that you're now positioned. You're positioning yourself to receive the benefits, to receive the blessings that come with obedience, obedience to uh, God's commands. This means that God can now work all things together toward your good. 
God is at work in the lives of those who give thanks in all situations. But the opposite is also true. Those who do not give thanks, those who uh, complain and gripe and grumble, those who only see the glass as being half empty, uh, half empty, they are outside of God's will for their lives. They're not in a position to see God at work. In, in our flesh, in our fallen state, uh, complaining competes with gratitude for our attention and for our action, for what we do. And if we're not careful, complaining and grumbling can consume us, especially when we're in unfavorable circumstances. Uh, but again, when we do that, it places us outside of God's will, what he wants for your life, how he wants to bless you. He can't do it when all we're doing is complaining, when all we're doing is not showing gratitude. In Philippians, we're reminded to do everything without grumbling, without complaining. And the reason is it's because this is how we show the world that we are blameless and pure children of God who shine like stars amidst people who do not know the Lord, who are not living inside of his will. Peter tells us that it is uh, God's will that no one would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And so God's will for your life is that you would give thanks in all circumstances because in doing so, you are helping point others toward your heavenly Father. You see, giving thanks isn't just, isn't just for your own benefit. It's for others. God isn't just at work in you when you give thanks. He's working through you as well. And by giving thanks in every situation, even when it's hard, even when it hurts, even when it feels like it's inconvenience, uh, an inconvenience, even when you don't feel like it, even when the rest of the world is crashing down around you and you feel like everyone and everything is against you, giving thanks allows you to partner with our Lord in his mission to seek and save the lost. Having a thankful attitude it helps spread the message of God's hope to this broken and hurting world. God uses your thankfulness to show others who he is. And I'm thankful for that. You see, when we give thanks, we become a, an agent of change for God. You become his agent of change for your family, for your school, for your coworkers, for this community. And so today, church, I just want to challenge you to give and to live thanks. Let's be a people who wake up every single day grateful, expressing gratitude toward our Heavenly Father and expecting Him to bless us because we are His children, we are His obedient children, and knowing that no matter what, no matter the circumstance, He's with us. And then we can anticipate how he's going to use our thankfulness to reach this world with the hope of Jesus. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks. God, we give you thanks because we know that even in the midst of this challenging season that we are all in, you are at work. You are at work in our lives. You are stretching and growing our faith. You still provide for our every single need. And while you're doing all that, God, you are using us to be an example to the rest of the world. You're working in us, but you're also working through us to reach the lost, to reach those in our family who who don't yet, yet know you, God, to reach those at our school and at our workplace who have yet to, to experience all the benefits and all the blessings that come from being an obedient child of God. So God, we thank you. God, help us to be a people who constantly give you praise and give you glory and give you gratitude for who you are, and for what you've done in our lives. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. God, as we head into this season where we, we celebrate his birth, 
and we're excited about the coming of our King. God, we also thank you for his death. We thank you for the event that changed the world, that, that we have a Savior who willingly took our place on the cross. And just when everybody thought it was lights out and game, game over, he came back to life. We thank you for a resurrected Savior who conquered the grave and whose power over death is the same power that is changing our lives today. We pray all this in his powerful name. Amen. Well, I, for one, am glad that it is well. Hey, uh, just a couple quick things, maybe not quite so quick. Uh, in fact, you can just have a seat for a moment if you'd like. Um, hey, uh, we've mentioned this the last couple of weeks, but there have been several folks in our congregation over the last month or so that have, um, that have tested positive for COVID. Uh, none of them have contracted it here, which is great, and that tells us that you guys are being cautious. You're staying home if you're sick. You're staying apart from each other. Uh, you're not kissing and hugging all over each other like normal. That's great. Uh, but nevertheless, we have had several people uh, who are part of our congregation who have uh, come down with COVID and who are still experiencing the effects of that. Uh, and they would tell you they would not wish that on anybody and their families uh, the same way as well, feel the same way. And so uh, over the next month, our leadership has decided to take some extra precautions just to make sure that we are gathering safely, that we are being as safe as we possibly can. Uh, you actually have experienced the effect of some of that this morning as we've uh, spaced out the seating a little bit. I know that some of you have been sitting in the same pew since this church was built almost 14 years ago. I apologize for messing with your routine. In fact, some of you are like, where am I right now? Uh, I'm not sitting in my seat. Uh, but that's just, it's just one thing that we've asked everybody to just uh, please do over the next few weeks as we enter into the holiday season. And several of you are going to be gathering with your families. And that's awesome and that's great. But we just want to uh, be as safe as possible. Um, and so that's one of the things we're doing. But also, uh, for the next three coming Sundays, the first three Sundays in December, the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th, uh, we are only going to be having our main uh, worship service in here. So all other Sunday morning programming, uh, our children's ministry, our nursery, our, our student ministry, Sunday school classes, uh, will not be meeting those first three Sundays in December. Uh, we will just be in here kind of doing family style worship like we did today. Uh, and then for Christmas Eve, and the Sunday after Christmas, so December 24th and the 27th, we will be online only uh, for those two gatherings. Uh, and so what that will allow is, is a couple of weeks in between gatherings around the holidays here at church, uh, just to allow people uh, to play it very, very safe. Uh, again, we want to keep it that way, that nobody has contracted COVID while they've gathered here uh, and so for those two, the, the 24th and the 27th, we will be online only for that week. Um, next week was uh, originally supposed to be our congregational vote. Um, here's what we're asking you to do for that. In just a moment when we dismiss, uh, we ask any of our members that would like to today out at the Welcome Center, you can pick up a ballot. Uh, you can vote in person out there today. Uh, but then we are going to extend our mail-in voting by a week. So uh, it was going to be uh, through next week. Now it will be through December 13th. So that gives you an extra week. Uh, if you would like to contact our office and request a ballot, we can have that mailed to you uh, so that you can get it back to us here in the next couple weeks um, for the congregational vote. Uh, the only other outside programming that's going to be happening the next couple weeks is the student ministry, smaller gatherings that happen outside of Sunday morning that we already had planned. Uh, those will still proceed as normal because those are very, very small uh, gatherings. But as far as what happens on Sunday morning, it'll just be this for the next three weeks. I think that about covers everything, Craig. Does that sound, all right. You guys, everybody, capiche? You, you're, you're following me? You're tracking me here? All right, so again, we are doing this, uh, friends, out of love. Uh, we want to consider others and put others before ourselves, and so this is just one way that we can do that to keep everyone uh, safe as we enter into the holiday season. Um, I don't like it. I know you guys don't like it. Everybody's ready for things to be back to normal, uh, but it looks like it's just going to take a little bit 
uh, longer to do so. In the meantime, continue to pray for those families in our church that are still right in the middle, right in the trenches, uh, dealing with COVID. Uh, They need all the prayers they can get. And so with that, let me pray for you guys. And then when we dismiss, again, Welcome Center, uh, that is where you can pick up your ballot and vote in person. Otherwise, request a mail-in, and uh, that'll be due in a couple of weeks. Let me pray for you guys. God, we thank you again so much uh, for today. We thank you that we live in a country where we can gather and we can worship freely, where we can worship our Heavenly Father, where we can thank Him, where we can come around the communion table where we can worship through singing and giving and uh, looking at your word. God, we are so blessed. And so God, right now we come to you and we ask a special blessing on those in our congregation uh, that are sick right now, that their bodies are in need of your healing touch. Uh, God, we just pray that you would encourage them. We pray that you would comfort them. For their families that are caring for them, we pray that you would give them strength and peace. Uh, God, a peace that passes all understanding. And we know that only comes from Jesus. And so we are so thankful for him. We are so thankful for this season uh, that we get to lift him up and show him to the world, that we get to proclaim that message We are thankful for that, Heavenly Father. Please keep us all safe as we leave this week and bring us back together safely next week. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.